Hello. Today, we're actually going to begin some physics. So we're starting with chapter two, displacement and velocity. The objectives for this podcast are, students will define a frame of reference, displacement, time, and velocity as they apply to one dimensional motion. Students will calculate the displacement of an object under a given velocity. So here we have a train. It's moving from left to right. We know that things that move have a velocity. You should know this by now. But a frame of reference. In order to measure the distance of an object, we must use a frame of reference. We could choose whatever frame of reference we want, but it's important once we choose it, we stick with it. So in this case, point A to point B, that'll be your frame of reference, starting point and point. Because frame of references are usually something that's easy. These are usually distinct points on the Earth's surface or distinguishing points in the sky. Uh, so, like, a frame of reference could be your house to the grocery store. Like, you know, two points, point A to point B. So the perception of motion depends on the observer's frame of reference. It could be different for different people. So try to think about and describe the motion observed by one of the boys in the drawing. How does the motion appear to be different to the other boy? So one boy is facing forward. That boy right there, this guy, he's facing this way. He's looking this way. But this guy is looking the other way. How do they see the girl to be moving? It's going to be different for each one. For this guy right here, the girl seems to be coming from in front of him. And then as the bus passes them, that passes her, she seems to be going behind him. But this guy, the girl is actually coming from behind him. That's his frame of reference. That's how he sees it. She comes from behind and then goes away in front of him like she's moving forward. This guy sees her moving backwards. So now imagine that you are the girl observing the bus. Describe the motion of each object that you can see. So this is where it gets a little kind of cool. For each one of these guys, this ball right here appears to go up and down. Because they are both inside the bus. That's their, like, the reference frame of the bus. So if you're in a car, try it. Like, throw a tennis ball or something up in the air. It just seems to go straight up and straight down. However, this girl, she initially sees the ball here when the, this kid throws it upwards. And then it comes back down and it ends right here. But she actually sees the ball go in a parabolic path like that. So that's what we mean by frame of reference. Like the boys see the ball just go up and down. She sees the ball go in an arc from left to right. Different reference frames for different people. So distance is a scalar quantity and tells us only a magnitude. It's only the number sum taken. So distance is a scalar. Scalar, there's also vectors. Remember, scalar is just the size. It's just the magnitude of something. We also have vectors, which are velocity with direction. Or sorry, it's a magnitude and direction. If you ever seen Despicable Me, the villain uh, vector, like that's his name because he's committing crimes of both directions and magnitude. So here's the difference between displacement and distance. That's a really annoying animation. I should have took that off there. Oops. I thought there was some animation there. Okay, so distance. We might start here. Choose a different color. We might start here. Let me follow this weird path. And maybe you had uh, too much cough medicine and you decided to go for a drive. And do this weird little uh, terrible curve. So the total distance you traveled was the length of this entire line. However, your displacement is only from here down to here. Now, displacement is a vector quantity. Vector. Because it has magnitude, the length of this. And we also have to choose a direction for it. We'll talk about this a little more when we do vectors. It's usually some angle. In this case, it might be like 
this much degrees south of the east direction because this is eastward and we go a certain amount south of it. We'll talk about that later when we get to vectors. So, again, you drive the path and your odometer goes up by 8 miles. So if you take this entire path here, it'll be 8 miles. But your displacement is the shorter. So your displacement is usually shorter than your distance. I really can't think of any instance where it will be longer. So what if you drove in a circle? So let's say I just draw a circle here. I start here. I drive in a nice circle. So what would my distance be? It'd be the circumference of a circle. So your distance would be 2 pi times the radius. It's the radius of the circle. But what is your displacement? You ended where you began. So here I ended over here. But here I ended the same place I started. That means my displacement will be 0. So speed is the distance traveled by a moving object over a period of time. You can actually translate that into an equation. So speed equals the distance traveled by an object over a period of time. Speed equals distance over time. And there's your first kinematics equation. I know you're ecstatic. So if you look at this car down here, he's traveling for 0.2 hours, and he goes a distance of 5 miles. So 5 divided by 0.2 is going to give us 10 miles per hour. So a constant speed. A moving object that doesn't change its speed travels at a constant speed. So it has a continuous speed the whole time. You get a nice looking straight graph. Now, constant speed means equal distances are covered an equal amount of time. So each, we broke this up into our little time segments here. One second, two seconds, three seconds, and so on. It means the blue car, he's traveling the same distance in between each one of these intervals. Now the red car, he starts a little later than the blue car but he ends up going further because he's traveling faster. He covers a greater distance in the same amount of time. So you can see the red car goes from this point to this point. So that's 20 meters in one second. For the blue car, let's pick some good one. Roughly, we'll just say that's 20. That's 40. He goes 20, the same distance, 20 meters, in a period of four seconds. He's only going five meters per second, while the red car goes 20 meters in one second. So he's going 20 meters per second. It's that simple. I already said speed equals distance over time. So if a runner travels 10 meters in 10 seconds, what is the average speed? Now, it's probably not constant for a runner because they'll start from rest and then they speed up to that speed. So you can also just rearrange this using a little bit of uh, algebra to solve for the other things. Like for instance, multiply both sides by time. I know you're all wonderful at algebra, so it's probably just a little bit of review for you. That crosses out, and you're left with this equation. And then we can go from that equation, divide both sides by speed. Speed. Speed goes off the side, and we're left with the bottom equation, which is time equals distance over speed. 
So velocity is speed in a given direction. So just like distance is a scalar quantity, so is speed. This one's easy to remember because speed, scalar, velocity is a vector. So you're going to have a direction for that too. And here's another equation. The average velocity equals the change in your position over your change in time. Now a change of position, that's what this delta means here. It's not a triangle, it's a delta. It means the final position minus the initial position. Change in time is the final time minus the initial time. So your average velocity equals your displacement over a time interval. So your displacement and your time interval. Now instantaneous velocity is the velocity that something has only at one instance. Uh, sometimes you'll see in the book too it'll be instantaneous speed or average speed. You can also use those guys. So the average velocity for a trip might be 53 miles per hour because we're only talking about displacement from point A to point B. It might take you you might have an average velocity of 53 miles per hour. But during this trip, your instantaneous speed might have been zero miles per hour stoplight. So you might travel here. Oh crap, there's a stoplight. You gotta wait. So you stop, wait here for a couple seconds. Then you speed up because you're on the highway now. So it might be zero at one point, it might be 70 while you're on the highway. But altogether, the entire displacement divided by your time will, might only give you 53 miles per hour. So calculating average speed. While traveling on vacation, you measure the times and distances traveled. You travel 35 kilometers in 0.4 hours, followed by 53 kilometers in 0.6 hours. Now what is your average speed? So to do this, pretty simple. You want to write down your times. So your average speed here would be the total distance traveled. So average speed equals your total distance traveled or your displacement divided by the time. So you travel 35 kilometers and another 53 kilometers and it takes you 0 0.4 hours for the first part and 0 0.6 hours for the second part so you end up with 88 kilometers over one hour which is 88 kilometers per hour but sometimes you might see that just written km H, just let me write MPH for miles per hour. And that's just all what I did here. <clears throat> that's it. Keep this one short for you. Thank you. Bye.